Welcome! In this session, we're going to be putting two new riffs together. We're starting with a melodic one first, then the other riff we're putting together is a rhythmic one, using pump number one and introducing you to pump number two. So get your horn out and let's get ready. I'll see you back at the studio in just a minute. Welcome to the Book of Riffs. This is where you will learn to put two, three, four, five or more horn players together, making up lines and riffs behind a vocalist or a soloist. So join me, your host, Bobby Blue, as I take you through my Book of Riffs and we rediscover the lost art of riffing. Let's get started with our first riff. Riff one is a melodic riff and it's divided into three parts. We have riff 1A, riff 1B, and riff 1C. In this episode, we introduce a new guide tone rule for three, which we will call the major minor approach. This may be a good time to go back and revisit episode one, as we used three notes in our melody in episode one, but this time we will be using four notes to create our melodic riff. We will be using the first, third, fifth, and sixth scale degrees of the F major scale. Let's practice our first riff. <laughs> That's the major version of riff 1A. Now here's the minor. This is where the three rule at bar five goes down a semitone or half step and makes a minor third. Let's look at all 12 bars now of riff 1A. In the first four bars on the one chord, same as last episode, we play a major third. The four chord is a minor third. That's the same as last episode. Then back to the one chord, major third, but this is where it's different. At the five chord, we are going down this time to the minor third and not up. Let's practice this all the way through before we go into the studio. One, two, and one, two, three. <laughs> Let's look at riff 1B, and this is a fantastic concept called Lower Neighbors. We are going to play a semitone or a half step under the third, whether it's major or minor. And that is a springing effect that gives a nice jazz, bluesy kind of sound to get into the third. Lower Neighbors, there are also Upper Neighbors, basically notes that are surrounding any important note in the key that you're playing in. So in this case, we're playing the riff coming from one down to six to flat three to three. And then at the four chord and the five chord, we have to find the lower neighbor for the minor third, which is the second scale degree that goes up a half step or a semitone to the flattened third. Also notice that pump one is implied by the first three notes and into the fourth note. So it's da di do da one and two and. One and two and. So effectively, we are keeping this rhythmic momentum of the pump going. Let's look at riff 1C. This expands on riff 1B and becomes a two bar phrase. And we are including the fifth scale degree as well. It's one, six, five, one, six, flat, three, three, one, six, five, one. So it's got this nice rhythm that uses the pump twice. One and two and, and four and one and two and. You wanna imply that pump and really feel that move along. Then in the last two bars, it's just descending down all the notes we've played from the one. So it's one, one, six, six, five, five, three, three, one, six, one, three, one, one. Well, that's enough for tutorials. Let's get into the studio and have a play on riff one.
Let's get started with riff two. Riff two is a rhythmic riff. It uses pump one, and we will introduce you to pump number two. I love this New Orleans parade or second line party music groove. It's busy and exciting. So to give it the momentum it deserves, I've doubled the timing of the pumps. And this will give contrast to riff number one, which also means that you get a lot of use from this pump number one. To keep the music notation visually consistent, I've written the music in cut time. This effectively makes it a 24 bar blues, but it's not because it's in cut time. It's still a 12 bar blues. Let's move on to the guide tones. These three short rhythmic riffs will all use the same guide tone rules. They'll be starting from the root, which is the first scale degree, the third and the fifth. Rule one is played by the soprano saxophone on the left. And just as we did in episode one, there is no movement. Rule number five is played by the clarinet on the right. And it also is the same as episode one with no movement. Now, in the middle is the alto saxophone playing the three rule. This is the new rule for this episode. It's the major minor approach. Remember, whenever you're playing over the one chord, you're playing the major third. And when you go to the four and five chords, both of them, you move down a semitone to play the minor third. The goal is to be able to know exactly what to do with your guide tones, depending upon whether you're on the one, the three, or the five. So I suggest you commit this to memory. If you need to read the sheet music to help you out, by all means. But, but this, this does, does need, need to be, to be memorized. memorized. Let's jump into the studio and get playing Riff 2. Well, I hope you've enjoyed episode two of Bobby Blue's Book of Riffs, where we've learned the guide tone rules for three, the major minor approach, and we included pump one and pump two. It's been a pleasure being your host, and to take you out, let's put the whole catastrophe together and have a party. See you next time in episode three.